Hey guys, this is going to be another quick Linux command video. Check the link in the description for more info and for copy and paste examples. The Linux sed command is used for transforming and filtering text. It stands for stream editor, sed, stream editor. It's uh, using sed is a quick way to swap values in a file and it's also commonly used with piped commands. So um, let, let's take a look here. We have a file called file1.txt and let, let's just swap some values in it. So let's say if we want to swap ABC for something else. So we, we might say sed and type our little sed command here, say s to swap. So we're going to use the sed command swap. We're going to swap ABC and so let's just swap this for, um, let's say QWE slash and we're, we're going to swap that out right there so anywhere where we had qwe in the file is swapped out but notice that's just the output the actual file is unchanged so if you want to change the file itself well before we do that i'm going to show you how a slightly more elaborate version of this so or, or one, one thing that is worth being aware of so abc abc all right so when you run you, you, you run this, this will replace anything that's ABC with QWE. So this one was replaced, this one was replaced, and this these two were not. So basically it will replace the first occurrence per line. So not the first occurrence in the file. See, we replaced it here, here, and here. So it, multiple occurrences in the file, but the first occurrence per line. So these two got missed. So we can fix that by typing G to make it uh, global. And there we go, we've replaced all of them. Now, another thing we could do is case insensitive. So see how we have an, a capital ABC right there? Let's say if we wanna swap that too, we can say capital I for case insensitive, and now we can swap that one out as well. Now, the, the file itself is still not changed. It's still, we didn't change the file, we just swap out those those uh, strings in the file and print it out to standard output. So if we want to edit the file in place, we can use a dash i. Now this is GNU, this is GNU or GNU specific. So this is only going to work on GNU Linux systems using the, the GNU or GNU version of sed. So if you're running on BSD or Solaris or something and you have that version of sed, it probably won't have the dash i option. So <clears throat> for those you're going to have, like on Mac OS or BSD or any Solaris or anything else, you're going to have to use that previous command up, up here, but you're going to have to redirect over the same file or write it to a different file and then copy it over, which is a bit of a pain. On Linux, you can edit in place using a dash I. So run this, and now if we check file one, you see it replaced all the stuff within the file for me. So that, that's kind of what we wanted there. So what, what else do we want to cover? We can also say we can create a backup with a specified. Um, so when you use a dash I with a dot BAK or, or whatever suffix you want, that will create a backup file. So notice that, uh, let's see, what did we call this file? It was file1.txt, um, file1.txt.bak. And we could, we could use any suffix we want. We, we could call it something crazy like that, and it will create a backup file with that specified suffix. So what I've shown you so far is basically everything you're ever going to likely need to do with sed, but I'm gonna show you some other tricks just, to, uh, just because they'll be useful. I'm gonna to try to go through these pretty quick. Um, I've shown you all the common everyday stuff you would do with sed so far. So. One thing you can do, you can silently make changes without um, outputting them. So let, let's say if you want to, this is commonly used with the, this is, this is useful with the I you're editing in place. Let's say you're doing this in a script or something, you don't want to output it, you just want to uh, have it swapped. You can do it N, that won't output anything, it just uh, makes the changes silently. So I for edit in place and N for silent, right? Now another thing you could do, you can do multiple, you can do multiple uh, strings to match, right? So you you could say, uh, 
uh, let's see here. So you could swap these. You could do a dash E, right? Dash E to, you know, swap these. Or you could do a, another dash E. So this is useful if you wanted to do like X, Y, Z, and you didn't want to do an elaborate um, regex or something. You could do like um, T, U, I, just, oops, yeah, T, U, I. What, what, whatever, uh, so, so swap it for something else like this. So you could run two separate things. We're gonna swap ABC for QWE and XYZ for TUI, right? So you, you could do that, It whoops, if you felt like it. And uh, I kind of just, um, yeah, in, anyways, it doesn't matter. You could, I just hit the enter button. Um, I think I just uh, fat fingered the wrong key there, but that, that's basically the syntax of what you would wanna do. Um, so using an extended regex, Let, let's say if you wanted to use an extended regex, you can, that is a better way to do what I was showing you before. So you could, you could say, um, X, Y, Z. So anything ABC or X, Y, Z, anything that matches this regex will be replaced with QWE. So dash capital E for extended regex. And there we go. Replace all that stuff. So what what else should we cover? Um, extended regexes, alternate delimiter. So let's say if you're trying to replace slashes like this, that's not so good. You you could actually use whatever character you use after the S is going to be your delimiter. So you can get the same effect using instead of a slash as your delimiter, you could use an exclamation mark. Whatever character comes after this S is going to be your delimiter. So you can continue to use that here and here in your file and that will work the same. So that's pretty useful. Um, that, that's useful if you wanted to put like um, something like this. Like uh, let's say if you wanted to do https colon slash slash google.com and maybe you want to swap it for you know bing.com something like that. So well, you see here, you don't want these to be interpreted as delimiters. So you use an alternate delimiter like this and problem solved, right? So you can um, unterminated string in here somewhere. Oh, and that is because I put this here. So I should be delimiting this with an exclamation mark like this. And there we go. Now I didn't have any of those strings in that file, but that's that's how you would use an alternate delimiter. Now what, what else? Um, same thing with piped. So basically you can use said with piped input. It works similarly. So ps-ef. Now let, you could say said root with a b c d global and there we go we replaced every instance of root with a b c d right so all of those are swapped so that's commonly used with piped input also now you can reuse groups within a regex so you could say You could say something like this, and you could, in your replace string, you could do something like this. You could say ampersand, then you could say slash one, right? And this is going to be more with extended reg regexes. There we go. So we replace the word root with uh, this right here. So we replace root and we, we group it. And you would have to know, understand regexes. But um, we, we separate it. In these, uh, these will separate it into one group here and another group here. And now we can refer back to these groups that we extracted in the, the replacement string. So the ampersand refers to the entire string that was matched. And a slash one refers to the first subgroup of it, which was OT right here. Now we could actually say um, slash two for the second subgroup. 
which is this right here, which is just a T. So you could do that. So, you know, full match, first scrub, subgroup, second subgroup. Okay, so th that's that. Um, probably something you'll never use. You're probably going to want to make a real script, use like Perl or Python or something if you're doing this. But that's something you could do if you want one nice little slick command all in one. Do with said. Um, let, let's see here. We have our test one. Txt. So you can transliterate characters. So let, let, let's try this said and instead of a an s to swap you can instead of s you could say y to transliterate and there are actually multiple commands you can use like this so you can say abc one two three now you could say g for global and i'm actually not sure if you need that for transliteration but this is going to replace this basically creates a transliteration set so anything that's an A will get, have a one swapped for it, and anything that's a B will have a two swapped for it, and anything that's a C will have a, a three swapped for it. So it's not like you're gonna swap A, B, C for one, two, three. You can swap any of these characters. Any A will be swapped with a one, no matter which order it occurs in. So let, let's give this a try. And so you don't need the G. So confirmed we don't need that. So yeah, A and B sw swapped with, uh, you know, one, two, three here. So notice in the original file, we had A, B, G, C. That was changed one, two, G, three. So see, it's not matching that whole string. It's just matching any individual character. It's character to character. So you, you, you could do something like this. So you could say A you could say like A B C, right? And, and you could even you know put a, a C here. Swap it like that, and there you go. It just swaps those out exactly like that. So that, that's transliteration. Now another thing you can do, let's let's come up with a show you how um, said commands can be a little bit more elaborate. So if a line contains a string, so you, you could say if a line contains ABC, this is gonna search for any line containing this, then we can tell it to swap ABC for one, two, three. So that, that obviously, you know, to swap that, it would have to contain that. We could, we could tell it swap X, Y, Z for one, two, three, right? So what, what does the original file look like? So nothing is going to really get swapped there. So let, let's create an instance where that would work. All right, so we have a line that contains ABC and XYZ, one with just ABC, one with just XYZ. So we can swap these out. We can say, so we're gonna only lines that match ABC and then only XYZ will get swapped for one, two, three. So this line contained ABC. So we swapped out XYZ for one, two, three. This one didn't get swapped out because it didn't contain ABC. This contained ABC, but didn't have anything to swap. So that's a little bit more elaborate of a said command. So now you can do things like, like you can say only do that for certain line numbers. So you can say swap it out, but only for, let's say lines one through, lines one to three. Right, so You, you could say lines, say five to the end of the file. 
Oops, I, I guess that's not valid. We'll swap out the ones here, right? So in any case, you can basically select line numbers or you could select based on you know what, what we did before. You, you, you can uh, match a string. So select lines based on a matched string or you can specify actual line numbers and then run your command that will swap one value for another. So this probably seems like kind of a dirty way of doing things if you're used to using like a real scripting language like Python or Perl or something. So anyways, um, so you, you can say said, let, let's just get rid of all of this and put a new command here and we can say anything matching ABC, we are going to run, so this is what we're gonna match, match this, anything match it, we're gonna run instead of an S command and put like a slash there, or instead of a transliterate command, we're going to place, uh, we are going to place an A there for append. Now any text that you put after that A is gonna get appended. So we, we could do something like this, a bunch of T's, that's going to append a bunch of T's on the next line after a matching line. So here we matched ABC on this line. The next line gets TTT appended to it. And same thing right here, right? So just another thing you can do with it. Not a common thing to do with said, but another thing you can do. Another command is D. So instead of appending, you can just tell it to delete. So you can just delete these lines completely. So A to append, D to delete. Now you could also, instead of trying to match a string, you could just say line number three, delete it. Or not line number three through eight, delete them, right? Or let, let's make that higher. 15, delete them, right? Delete most of the lines in there. Now, you could also do... Um, yeah, so that, that's a range of lines. You can just delete them out of a file. You could do a dollar sign to just go to the end of the file. And what, what else? So you can, yeah, so we, we've done a pending. You can say, all right, append X, Y, Z after. Yeah, that, that's basically everything that I'd want to cover for. I've covered extended regular expressions, and for quiet, I'll edit file in place, modifiers, one other thing you can do is duplicate a matched line. So let's say if you were going to say, this is for the swap expression, so a modifier for swap. So let's say if you were swapping ABC for XYZ, right? This is, a, this is your regular simple said command, right? So if you're gonna swap these, so cat, test1.txt, I forget what the file looked like. So we have some ABC, like an instance of ABC right here, right? So we're gonna swap it for XYZ, and we already had an XYZ after that. But our, all right, so for any time you do that, you can, there's another modifier. So remember we had the G modifier for global and the I modifier for case insensitive. Well, there's another one. You can say P to duplicate the matched line. So we can duplicate any, match, any lines that we swapped are also, so if we have a match and we swap it out, we're also gonna duplicate that line. Um, can't think of any cases where that would be useful, but it's something you can do. This is probably more than you ever need to know about said. Most of these complicated things you can do with said, you really shouldn't be. I think you should probably start, you should use like either Perl or Python to do most of these things. Um, really said, you should just use it for the most simple stuff. There might be some cases where you want a simple slick command to stick inside a bash script where maybe it has some more functionality, but I, I wouldn't go too far with this. But it's good to know, it's good to know things like alternate delimiters and stuff like that. Remember, check the links in the description for more info. Hit the subscribe button for more useful content like this. We also have a ton of other more interesting content covering things like coding, hardware, software, servers, Raspberry Pis, 3D printing, and a whole lot more. Hopefully you found this useful. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on that next video.